now that I check it, the voltage regulator, which is over here, I'm going to try to put it out for you. I was checking the circuit over here. We can see, obviously, that we have potentiometer here to adjust the amount of ampere voltage that we need in order to use the soldering inverter. And when I check it, the circuit, I find out there is one film capacitor is missing. Obviously, the previous guy that tried to fix this didn't put it back. So we're going to be replacing it. As well, I found out that this capacitor was already uh, shorted to ground. I'm going to try to find it to show you. Which I already replaced. And if you try to see here, I try to probe it with this. It will really give us continuity, which is totally destroyed. We cannot see from the top, it looks normal, but from down it looks blown up. So let's go ahead and replace the capacitors. Now that we have our solder iron hot enough, 400 Celsius, in order to remove the old capacitor which is blown up. So I have first of all to locate it. I'm going to try to be close to the camera as much as I can. So here it is. easy to get out. Clean the tip always. out good capacitors with the same value always of course before we put it in we need always to check the polarity and if you're familiar with electronics you will always know that in this kind of electronic capacitors there is a polarity so after cleaning up the board <coughs> we can now put it in and as I said earlier, we check the polarity. We'll always find a way So the minus to the minus, the plus to the plus.
the right amount of solder and we cut out any excess. Now we are done with this. Just remove this little about yeah. now we'll put this 100 microfarad capacitors 100 volts which I said earlier that the previous guy that attempted to repair this didn't put it back so I had to buy a new one in order to replace it so first of all as always we're gonna clean this area, remove any solder residue with the soldering pump always. So once we located it, we are good to go. Wait. And this is the one. Is it this? Better always to double check. That's one. Clean the tip always. And That's two. Now we take this capacitor. We put it to the correct place and we solder it. And then we will try this machine to see if it's finally working. We bent it a little bit in order to be able to solder it correctly. Oh, there you go. Now we cut any excess because the previous capacitors was short to the ground. I'm gonna check again the continuity. Now everything is fine, could give it a try to see what happened, hopefully it will get to work, maybe it will explode as well. I need to be very very careful with this kind of stuff, because you never know what happened. I can forget one cable one part, whatever it is, you never know. So just be very very careful and if you're not comfortable with this kind of repair, please don't try to do this. I'm gonna just blow a little bit of air on it to remove any debris, any dust or anything that could be stuck.
Let's plug it back and see what will happen now. And I'm connecting right now the ground to the ground. Plus and minus. Let's see. To make sure that there is nothing touching anything over here. So, kind of. So yeah, after, after reviewing all the components, as I mentioned earlier, I found out that it was as well this resistor which was burned, okay? Temporarily I tried it with lower resistance, okay, which is 4, four kilo ohm, instead of 47 kilo ohm. Obviously, this heat so quickly but I finally managed to get it to work. So, since this is not the same, I'm gonna need to modify it just a little bit in order to make it fit in our motherboard. So we don't need this anymore. So now, I'm gonna put it here, test the machine and see what's doing. After investigating, obviously I forget to put the spacer. You can see clearly here that you can see clearly here that this is still playing. So I'm gonna fix it using the screws and of course some spacers in order to avoid this problem from happening again. <laughs> <laughs> 